Mashur, thank you for agreeing to speak to the Ayuga today. We really enjoyed your Stump the Expert session and we just wanted to have some feedback on how you thought the session went and so we could let the other members know who missed the session about how it went on. What did you think about it today? Thank you, Kalevani. It's a great experience to take part in the scientific program. Today, the plenary uh, session, the stump, ex the expert, were really good. So uh, there, are, there were trainees presenting some difficult cases, which uh, had been discussed by the uh, debaters, the experts, and they tried to bring to the audience a situation which is really important in terms of education, the real life cases, and they were really difficult. Sometimes when we provide assistance to these patients, we face many difficulties which cannot be found in the books. And urinary incontinence may be regarded sometimes as a challenge to promote a better quality of life for those patients. I think what was really good about today was getting so many experts together on the same table, which in real life is a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. So uh, to the audience, from the audience perspective, and I was listening, it was really good to get a simultaneous interpretation from so many experts of the same case. How did you feel, uh, because I know your interest is in neurology, neuro-urology, and uh, how did you feel sitting with, for example, Prof. Caribou from the physiotherapy perspective and pro from Prof. Linda Cardo, so she has a huge interest in neurodynamics. How, how did you see that fitting in? It's, it was perfect. And it provides the audience with a clear aspect of uh, what should be the multidisciplinary approach for urinary incontinence. We depend on each other and if we are working together, the urologist, the gynecologist, urogynecologist, physiotherapists, geriatricians, and if, uh, even the rehab physicians, we can provide the patients a better, better quality of life. And urinary incontinence should not be seen as a disaster, but as a disease which can be treated properly with multidisciplinary care. So that it's important to hear from other uh, specialties uh, what to do. Because sometimes we don't think uh, uh, the same way. And uh, it's always important to have a good physiotherapist on your team so that you can start the conservative treatment. Sometimes the nurses can help us a lot. Uh, in neuro-urology, it's always important to have the neurologist in touch with the urologist, the gynecologist, uh, everybody can provide an input which will certainly help the patients. Now, what I also found was it suddenly broadens your perspective because you're used to looking at it a certain way as a urologist or as a gynecologist or a urogynecologist. And suddenly there is that, well, why didn't I think of that perspective to this when people are sitting together? So I think that was really good today. So what do you think went really well with the session today? Well, the first thing, uh, there are different steps which should be followed to treat and to assess patients with urinary incontinence. Uh, there are some algorithms which can be used, the Ayuga and the ICS are important uh, societies which can help us in these regards, but the conservative treatment should always be considered firstly the diagnostic workup should include uh, some special items such as a bladder diary the assessment of post voiding uh, residual the ultrasound sometimes can be useful for these patients uh, your analysis to exclude urinary tract infections but something which is really important and has been discussed today is to get from the patients what are their expectations in which ways the urinary incontinence negatively affects their quality of lives sometimes the physician expectation and the patient's expectations 
are different. Sure. And it should take, be taken into account. Otherwise, a good result will not be reached. That, that's quite true, and I think it was quite apparent from the discussion today that if you didn't have a clear point of what the expectation was, it was going to be difficult. And what did you think could have gone on better? So if we plan the session the next time, what would you like to see more of the next time around? Well, I guess that we had a very uh, spread session. We uh, had cases, neuro-urological cases, we have urogynecology, uh, your gynecological cases. I feel that uh, maybe in the near future you can uh, discuss a little bit more about OAB. Uh, let's say not uh, even mixture urinary incontinence, uh, but OAB itself, as we had many advances during the last few years on the treatment of refractory OAB so that we should uh, focus also on botulinum toxin, sacral neuromodulation, uh, TBL nerve stimulation. I think that's really trendy, you know? It's important for the urogynecologist to have a broad view about the treatment options for OEB as well. So I think this Stump the Expert session could be a good forum to bring forward the new advances and techniques because especially a lot of trainees attend these sessions and it would be really educated to them. I do agree with you. Uh, in terms of diagnostics, the, how much emphasis should be on the diagnostic part of uh, these sessions? Because uh, these are patients who had multiple surgeries or difficult diagnostics. So how much stress should be placed on the diagnostic aspect of the patient? This year's session was focused on treatment. The moderator was David Richmond, and it was a uh, really well conducted session. But uh, uh, on the other hand, to have a good treatment options, a range of options, we have to uh, consider the optimal diagnostic workup. As I told you before, there are many conservative uh, uh, steps which should be taken in order to evaluate these patients. But uh, uh, Maybe for the next year session, we should also think about your dynamics to discuss a little bit more about the graphics and different uh, techniques such as retro uh, pressure profile and video your dynamics, sure. which sometimes can bring us additional information. Well, uh, the diagnostic workup itself is very important. In these regards, the different specialties can provide the audience with different aspects of the evaluation and thus a better uh, range of treatment options for those patients suffering with urinary incontinence. Yeah, that's certainly. true. I think it certainly opens up more perspectives on the case as well, the more information certainly, you get certainly. at this stage. So one more thing which struck me was uh, it was a very international expert board, people from different parts of the country and different parts of the world and you all spoke the same language because it was a very stepwise approach and everybody started with the conservative management first even though different areas of expertise were maintained Certainly. across the cross specialties. What were your thoughts on those? Well, it seems that uh, step by step we are improving the, the standard of care for those patients and uh, well you know we didn't prepare any cases in advance the experts didn't know about what would those cases uh, would be so that uh, the same line which was a straight line uh, insight about the treatment options just reflects how we are improving in the care uh, advances in the care for those patients. So uh, I think that uh, the many specialties which are involved in the treatment of patients with urinary incontinence follow the same, uh, 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 let's say, algorithms. But the discussion among those different specialists, the experts, 
can provide us and the audience with a broad range uh, options in terms of treatment. It's really important. We, we certainly found it very informative, Mashu, and we look forward to welcoming you again to uh, perhaps another Stop the Expert session next year. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much, much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.